Hey guys, Dr. Huck here with the Weight Loss Minute. We're gonna, it's middle of January, so we're gonna go into a little more detail. Everyone's got New Year's resolutions. One of the big ones is weight loss. So we're gonna try and help you pull it all together so you can come up with a solution that you can live with. And I wanna break down some basic ideas and I want you to get a general understanding. So the two main components that people ask me all the time is, you know, exercise, and forgive my writing, I'm a doctor, my writing is not the best, um, and nutrition. So with, with exercise and nutrition, people always ask, you know, how much should I exercise? How often? What type of exercise should I do? What intensity should I do? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. How, um, how much exercise, so let's start with what type. Um, there's two main types of exercise you can do. They're categorized as to aerobic and anaerobic. Anaerobic would be strength training, interval training, speed work. So what are the benefits of those? Aerobic exercise is going to be when you go for a long bike ride um, on the Stairmaster, you go for a long run, and you get your heart rate elevated into a normal zone. What is that? So it's 220 minus your age times a percentage. The percentage for most people should be anywhere between 70 and 80 to 85 percent of that number. That is going to determine whether you're burning fat or carbohydrates. Um, obviously for most of us we want to burn fat. So long slow runs, long slow more time. You need to be into that 18, 20 plus minutes of an aerobic activity. Aerobic literally means with oxygen. So you need to, the, the talk test, you need to be able to breathe comfortably. That tells your body it's, you're burning most of it with oxygen aerobically. Your body can't burn as efficiently anaerobically. So that, what is anaerobic exercise? Anaerobic exercise is strength training, sprinting, high intensity, short duration. Um, for your body to do that, when you go to a gym or you do sprints, your body is burning primarily carbohydrates, but there are still benefits. Why would you do weight training versus aerobic exercise? Aerobic exercise, people say, oh, that's gonna burn more calories, that's what I wanna do. Well, it all boils down to metabolism. We're gonna talk that about, about that a little more in a minute. Um, and strength training builds muscle mass, you build a bigger engine. So when you're talking about your body, you want a Mustang, not a Prius. A Prius is going to be very efficient at burning fuel, but you don't want that. You want a big engine that's going to burn a lot of calories and it's going to boost your metabolism up real high. So then the next question is how often? It all depends what you're trying to do. I've worked with people that were 450 pounds that got out of breath walking from their, their chair to the bathroom or to the kitchen to uh, professional athletes um, and everyone in between. So it depends on where you are. And it doesn't matter where you start, just know where you start and then develop a plan that's gonna get you to where you wanna be, and that's your goal. Um, so how often I would say you need to start with probably two to three times a week at least of aerobic exercise, 15 plus minutes, getting your heart rate into this target zone. Um, and then you need to do one to two times a week of anaerobic or strength training to build more muscle mass and increase your metabolism. All right, so those are the good key points there. Um, and then, this is, we're not gonna go into a ton of detail of what choice, aerobic, do whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with. Whether it's bike riding, running, a long walk, anything that's gonna get your heart rate in this range for an extended period of time is the best choice for you, something that you're gonna stick with it. The best is to do a variety of things. The Stairmaster today, tomorrow I'm gonna to run, I'm gonna swim one day, I'm gonna bike one day, a variety of different things. It's good for your body, balance, all right? Um, and then stick with it. Rome wasn't built in a day. This isn't gonna, you're not gonna go from wherever you're at to your goal in two days. You're gonna have good days, bad days, stick with it. The next thing, nutrition. Again, it's all about balance. So I'm not a calorie counter. I don't believe that you should count your calories. Look at your portion sizes, okay? Um, a fist-sized piece of protein, a fist-sized piece of carbohydrate, and some vegetables. 40, 30, 30 is probably, in my opinion, the best way to go. 40% carbohydrates, 
30% protein, 30% fat. We can break down in future times the keto diet, the Atkins diet, the South Beach diet, there's the chicken soup diet, there's the cabbage soup diet, there's a million diets, okay? If you need a diet to get you kick-started, whether it's chiral thin or keto or whatever, to get you kick-started, that's fine, but eventually you need to transition into a lifestyle, something that you can live with long-term and be happy with and comfortable with. And you're gonna have good days and bad days and that's okay as long as over the long term you're getting to where you wanna be and you're monitoring your food consumption. So the next question I get is people always ask, intermittent fasting, how, how often should I eat? And again, this ties into metabolism. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this when we get into metabolism, but basically, every time you eat, you spike your metabolism a little bit because your body has to digest that food you just ate. So that takes energy to digest it. So if you're eating multiple times a day, you're getting those little bumps in your metabolism. And when your metabolism comes up and down, it doesn't go straight up there and straight down. It goes up and then it slowly will trickle back down. You eat again, you keep getting these little bumps in your metabolism throughout the day. And that's what we want to accomplish, okay? And we're going to talk about all these things because metabolism and absorption are the key things. So then, the other thing as far as food choices, carbohydrates are getting a bad rap. Not all carbohydrates are the same. An apple is a good carbohydrate. It's got a high fiber content and it's got a low glycemic index. We talked about that before. Glycemic index has to do with how fast a particular food is absorbed into your body. So if I take a glass of orange juice and I chug that glass of orange juice, within minutes, that, those carbohydrates are in my bloodstream and I'm gonna get that spike in my blood glucose levels and then my insulin response from my body and then it becomes the roller coaster ride. Where an apple is gonna be a slow and steady release for hours on end. So low glycemic index foods. And then there's also food combining. If I eat a whole plate of spaghetti, pasta, and then have rolls with it, it's all carbs. 100% of that meal is carbohydrates. That's a bad thing because then they're all gonna be absorbed quickly and then we're gonna get that same spike, all right? So, but food combining, if I have those with uh, some pasta, with some lean protein, chicken or fish, and then some vegetables, that, those other foods are gonna change how quickly that pasta is absorbed and that carbohydrate is absorbed and we're gonna get a slower release. We still don't want a ton of carbohydrates, but 30 to 40% of your diet from carbohydrates is a good thing and that's what we need to pay attention to. So we're gonna talk, I got a little cheat sheet here so I stay on task, guys. Um, how often eat, follow the kiss rule, I always say. Keep it simple. There is no exact science. And your body is different than my body, different than somebody else's body. So you need to find what is gonna work best for you and then tweak it as you go. But in general, lean proteins, chicken, fish, occasionally lean red meats, these are all good sources and they should be in almost every day. Um, anything that is processed foods, processed carbohydrates, it contains a ton of sugar the whole pastry section of a grocery store, out, cereals, anything processed or refined that has a long shelf life is going to have a very high glycemic index and you want to try and avoid those as much as possible. Fats, here's some of the issues that I have with some of these other diets, like you can eat all the bacon you want. That may be okay in the short term, but for your long term health that's not a good solution in my opinion. So you need to get healthy sources of fats. Um, unsaturated, mono and poly unsaturated fats, limit your saturated fats and try and stay away from trans. Those are fats that aren't necessarily, a saturated fat is a solid at room temperature. Anything that is solid at room temperature is generally a saturated fat. A trans fat is something that is not necessarily solid at room temperature, but they add things to it to make it a solid and they take away some of those bonds to make it, those double bonds to make it a solid at room temperature. We want to stay away from trans fats. Um, lean, high, low glycemic index carbohydrates, lean proteins, good quality fats, and multiple times throughout the day in my opinion. You should be eating three to five or six times a day, smaller portions. And again, it's portion size versus calorie counting. 
what most people do is they get fixated on a calorie number, but you can't stay on that forever. It has to be sustainable. Something that you can live with for the long haul and have some ups and downs. I've worked with several people that are doing great and they lose 30, 40, 50 pounds and then all of a sudden they have a bad weekend. There's a birthday party, there's some graduation party, they go out of town, they go out to dinner and they have alcohol and pizza and wings and they have cake and all these different things and they think, oh, I blew it. No, you didn't blow it, all right? Mentally, you gotta get rid of that. It has to be perfect 24 seven. Nobody can sustain that. So you had a bad day, you went off course. Just get back on course and get back on the track. But fix it soon, don't let a weekend turn into two weeks, two months, and then a year. And then all of a sudden you're back 50 pounds heavier. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the main two things that you need to pay attention to, all right? And if you understand this, this will give you a basic idea of where you need to be. So those two things, guys, I'm gonna make a, uh, a little graph here for you, are metabolism and absorption. So this metabolism is basically calories. So how many calories do you burn over time? All right, this is metabolism. And then um, absorption is the same calories and the same time, but it, this is gonna be in minutes. So this is gonna be over the course of a day. So from when you get up to when you go to bed, and this is gonna be a minute. So 15 minutes to 30 minutes, all the way to you know two hours. So, what you need to understand, everyone has a basic metabolism. So when you sleep, your body is always replenishing cells all throughout the day, all right? You have a baseline metabolism. So if I sit on the couch all day and do nothing, I'm burning calories, okay? Now, if I sit on the couch next to John Cena sitting on the couch, he's gonna burn more, more calories than I am in the day because his metabolism is higher. Same thing for a professional athlete, more lean mass, higher metabolism. Teenagers, they're building and growing, their metabolism is very high. So some people's metabolism might be here, or we'll use some different colors, where somebody else's metabolism is down here, and then another person's metabolism is up here all day, okay? So our goal is to get our baseline metabolism as high as we possibly can. So we wanna move it all the way up as high as we can. How do we do that? We do that with exercise, aerobic and anaerobic exercise. We're gonna increase our metabolism. And then we can do different things to, to do that. Every time we eat, we can take our, we take our base metabolism and we eat and we get a little spike, okay? And then if we eat again, we get a little spike. If we eat again, we get a little spike. If we exercise in here, we, instead of dripping, we get a higher spike, okay? And then it doesn't come straight back down, it'll go like this, and, and gradually go back towards this baseline. But the more we can keep our metabolism up here, the better. The more calories we're burning on a sustained basis, okay? The next thing you need to understand is absorption. Every time we eat food, it has to be broken down and absorbed into our bodies, into the basic components that our body needs. Simple carbohydrates, fats that are essential, amino acids from the protein so that we can repair and rebuild muscle, and we have the carbohydrates for energy. So, what we want is we want foods that are absorbed very slowly over a long period of time. So if I eat oatmeal, an apple, I eat protein, different things, um, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, low glycemic index foods that will stay and be absorbed over a long period of time and we don't get those huge spikes. When I, when I have a cinnamon roll, okay, a big glass of orange juice, uh, things like this, that food is going to be absorbed, those same calories are going to be absorbed in about 10 minutes and I'm gonna get a spike in my glucose levels, okay? So our glucose, again, forgive my writing, all right, is gonna spike 
and then our body's going to secrete insulin and it's going to bring this glucose back down quickly and then we get the dip and what happens when we're down here we've all been there you crave you crave that sugar because your glucose is now too low so you eat something else that has a very high glycemic index it absorbed very quickly and you get this spike and this is the roller coaster that people are on that we want to avoid we want a steady release of energy throughout the day and avoid those spikes our glucose level in our blood is maintained our insulin levels are maintained it's better from an inflammation standpoint it's better from an overall health and it is much better from a weight loss standpoint because now we don't have those cravings we don't crave sugar all the time 24 7 but here's the thing we just got through Christmas New Year's parties is anyone perfect no nobody is perfect don't hold yourself to that standard we, we've created this uh, this false reality in the world where you see these models on magazines and everything that is not real if you look at any of the movies the guys um, Rocky those guys or any of them they will train for eight months and and cut down forever to get to that weight it is not a sustainable weight for most people and then like we've talked about before your body type might be different don't hold yourself to those standards just become a better version of you and the better you can do that with all of this with the exercise and solid nutrition four or five meals now everyone asks about intermittent fasting so I'm going to talk about this to end this up real quick intermittent fasting is a real thing and it does have some benefits so the reason you'll know and how you'll know with all of this how you're doing if you can go from seven o'clock at night and stop eating and make it all the way to seven eight in the morning 12 hours 13 hours and you don't wake up starving or craving sugar and stuff you're starting to improve this and you're starting to get to more to a baseline if you have to eat and you're starving every two hours you're in this roller coaster ride okay so you need to change the foods you choose stay high low glycemic index foods um, high fiber and and good sources of protein so you get this steady release throughout the day and then if you need to tweak it periodically then you can tweak with the calories and everything but start here get on a healthy eating habit start seeing some of the results the last thing I'm going to say is pay attention weight the scale is not always the answer I can have two people put them both on the scale two gentlemen they both are 5'10 they both weigh 245 pounds what does that tell you it doesn't tell you anything about that person one person could be John Cena and the other person could be extremely out of shape and have a hundred pounds of excess fat and a big belly so don't get caught up on the scale get caught up on how you feel a little bit on the scale you should see it go down but if you're doing this correctly you're gonna see some muscle gains and different things and that's a good thing how do your clothes fit how's your energy level and the scale but the scale is not the end-all be-all guys so I hope this is helpful if you have questions post them put them out there I'll try and answer them if there's things that you still don't understand we'll try and go into more detail into certain sections and really try and put this together so you can understand it but it's not an exact science there is no one perfect thing that is going to work for everyone so you have to tweak it and adjust it and stay the course long haul you're going to have good and bad days that's okay have a great day guys we'll see you soon